Okay, so in this video, we will find the partial fraction decomposition of this single rational function, and then use our decomposition to integrate this function with respect to x. The first question is, can we decompose this rational function into a sum of partial fractions only if the degree of the numerator is strictly less than the degree of the denominator? Well, the degree of our numerator is 3, now, if you multiply this out, you have a quadratic term times a quadratic term, which will give you a an x of the 4 term. So we have degree 4 for our denominator. As 3 is strictly smaller than 4, then we are good to go. Well, okay, so we look first at the terms. We have x minus 1 with an exponent of 2. This will return two partial fractions. The x squared plus 1 is an irreducible quadratic, but it has an exponent of 1, so it will return a single partial fraction. So the x minus 1 squared will return on the denominator an x minus 1 and an x minus 1 squared. For the irreducible quadratic, it's going to be quite simply, x squared plus 1. Now for the numerator, we ignore the exponents. x minus 1 is a linear factor, so the numerator for each partial fraction that originates from the given factor has to be a constant, say a and b. And for the third partial fraction, it originates from an irreducible quadratic polynomial, so its numerator is not a single constant, but a linear polynomial, so a multiple of x plus a constant. Now we want to solve for the coefficients. As in our previous video, we want to go from an equality between rational functions to an equality between polynomials. As always, we want to multiply both sides by our denominator, so if we do so, on the left we'll be left with, of course, the numerator, so 4x cubed minus x squared plus 1, on the right, well, we'll have to multiply each partial fraction if we distribute by the denominator. So if you think of it, you'll have a over x minus 1 times this, but x minus 1 squared over x minus 1 gives you a single x minus 1, times, of course, x squared plus 1, as there is no over x squared plus 1 here. Check, plus b. Again, b over x minus 1 squared times all this, but the x minus 1 squared over itself will cancel and will be left with b times x squared plus 1. And finally, plus cx plus d over x squared plus 1 times all of this, while the x squared plus 1 over itself will cancel, and we'll be left with times x minus 1 all squared. And now we have our equality between two polynomials. Well, let's see, can we choose a value of x that will eliminate all the coefficients except for 1? And you can see that coming from the linear term, choosing x to be 1, this term goes away, this term goes away, and this will allow us to solve for b, independently of the other three coefficients. So let's do so, letting x be 1. So what do we have? Well, we have 4 minus 1 plus 1 is simply 4 equals, this goes away, this goes away, and we're left with 1 plus 1, 2 times b. So 4 equals 2b, which quite obviously means that b equals 2. So one coefficient down, three more to go. Now you ask, are there any other values of x that will allow us to eliminate all the coefficients but one? And the answer is no. If you look at the factors, x minus one we've already used, the only other factor is x squared plus one. As this is an irreducible quadratic, it cannot be made equal to zero by choosing a real value of x. So this method, by choosing a proper choice of x value, 
has given us all it's good, all it could. So we have the value of b. That's all we get from this method. So of course we have to fall back on the idea of rewriting the right hand side into its canonical form, and then we can equate coefficients on both sides, which will give us equations that will allow us to solve for the other three coefficients. So we have to multiply this out and regroup similar powers of x, so all the constant terms, multiples of x, x squared, and finally x cubed. Let me put this separately. Now we use the second method. So ignore this for now. Let's multiply out and regroup. Of course we won't leave b as b, as now we know that b equals 2. So what will happen? And I will call this the right hand side RHS. So we'll have A. Let's multiply out. We'll get x cubed plus x minus x squared minus 1 plus 2 x squared plus 2. Plus well, here I'll multiply this out first, then I'll multiply this with this. So, x minus 1 squared, if you square this out, you will get x squared minus 2x plus 1. And now let's multiply the cx plus d term times this term. So let's first multiply cx, will give us cx cubed minus 2cx squared. plus cx. Plus, let me now multiply the d, so plus dx squared minus 2dx plus d. Okay. Now that we have multiplied out, and of course you can multiply the a here out, let's regroup similar powers of x. So let's regroup the x cubed first. So x cubed times, we'll have x cubed times a, no other x cubed, plus c times x cubed, so plus c, other x cubed, no, so that's our multiple of x cubed plus the multiple of x squared. Well, what do we have? We have an a times negative x squared. So this will give us a negative a. There's a plus 2x squared, so plus 2. Then there's a negative 2c x squared, so negative 2c. And there's also a plus d x squared, plus d. Now, multiple of x, there's an a times x, so plus a. And there's a plus c times x, so plus c. And there's a negative 2d times x, negative 2d. And finally, the constant term, minus a, plus 2, plus d. And now by expanding out the right-hand side, we now have it in its canonical form. And the canonical form, of course, means all the constant terms together, all the multiples of x together, all the multiples of x squared, and all the multiples of x cubed. And now we can, of course, equate the coefficients on both sides, as this is the right-hand side, which equals the left-hand side. But we have an equality between two polynomials. They must all have the same coefficients. And so, negative a plus 2 plus d is a constant term. It must be equal to 1. The multiple of x, now if you look on the left, there is no multiple of x, but there is 1, it is 0. 0 times x, and so this must be equal to 0. The multiple of x squared is this, which must be equal to negative 1.
and the multiple of x cubed is this, which must be equal to 4. And now we have equation that will allow us to solve for the remaining three coefficients, namely a, c, and d. How do we combine them? Well, Let me rewrite all three on the left here. So we have what? We have 4 equals a plus c. Then we have negative 1 equals negative a plus 2, negative 2c plus d. Then we have 0 equals a plus c negative 2d. And then we have that 1 equals negative a plus 2 plus d. And if you look at these four equalities now, there's an a plus c here and an a plus c. We can subtract both sides, and then we'll have isolated for d. So if we do this minus this, well, 4 minus 0 is 4, which will equal this minus this a minus a0, c minus c0, 0 minus 2d will give us positive 2d. So if 4 equals 2d, of course, d must be equal to 2. And the fact that both b and d are 2 is purely coincidental. Now, well, we have a pretty easy task. As d is 2, we can plug back in here. And we have that 1 will equal negative a plus 2 plus d, which is 2, so negative a plus 4. Well, if 4 minus a is 1, a must be 3. Now that we have both a and d, well, we can easily solve for c. So if you plug in here a equals 3, we have that 4 equals 3 plus c. If 3 plus c is 4, c of course is 1. And now we have all four coefficients. a is 3, b is 2, c is 1, and d is 2. And so we now have our complete partial fraction decomposition. And so we're going to ask now, well how do we find the integral of this rather complex rational function. Well, let's see. So we want the integral of 4x cubed minus x squared plus 1 over x minus 1 squared times x squared plus 1. And of course, now we replace the original rational function by its partial fraction decomposition. So the first term was a over x minus 1. a is 3. Plus the second term, b over x minus 1 squared. b was 2. And the other partial fraction was over x squared plus 1. And our numerator, if you recall, was cx plus d. Well, cx, 1 times x is x, plus d, which is 2. So now that we have the partial fraction decomposition, we, of course, ignore the first integral in favor of these three integrals. As we'll see, it's more like 4. So let's split them up. So we'll have first the integral, and here I'll factor the 3 outside. So this would be 3 times the integral of 1 over x minus 1 dx. Plus, I'll factor the 2 here, so plus 2, times the integral of 1 over x minus 1 squared dx. Plus, now if you try to integrate this rational function, as a single fraction, you will have a hell of a time, as it cannot be done. 
The only way to integrate this fraction is if you break it up as a sum of two fractions, x over x squared plus 1 plus 2 over x squared plus 1. So you have to break up these two, uh, this one rational function into, again, a sum of two rational functions. So the first integral would be x over x squared plus 1 dx plus, we'll factor here the 2 as a constant multiple, plus 2 times the integral, of course, now of 1 over x squared plus 1. So now we have four integrals instead of one, but I think we can agree that each one looks much simpler than the original integral. So how do we handle these integrals? Well, the first one is pretty straightforward. If you integrate one over x minus one, you get the ln of x minus one in absolute value. Check. This one is a bit more interesting. To integrate 1 over x minus 1 squared, you can make a simple u substitution. And in this case, you can let u be x minus 1. I will let you work out the detail. This is a very simple u substitution. And you will arrive at a final answer of negative 2 over x minus 1. Plus, this integral which again, if you look, the derivative of x squared plus 1 up to 2 is x. This is again a perfect setup for a u substitution, but now u will be x squared plus 1. Again, it is a very straightforward u substitution. I will let you work out the details, and you will arrive at a half, the ln of x squared plus 1. And as x squared plus 1 is always positive, you can drop the absolute values in favor of just regular brackets. Plus the fourth integral, 2 times. Well, this one is very simple, right? This is the derivative of arctan of x. So, of course, the integral of 1 over x squared plus 1 is simply arctangent of x. And in the end, we add the arbitrary constant of integration. And we're done. So, you can appreciate that the original fraction looked rather intimidating. It's not clear how to tackle this integral. But once it is broken down into a sum of three partial fractions, and after splitting up the third one into four integrals, two were essentially trivial, and two required a simple u substitution, we arrived at a very elegant final answer. And I think you can agree that this is not a trivial answer. I don't think you could have guessed that the integral of this rational function was going to be this answer. Of course, if you differentiate this and you recombine all the partial fractions into a single fraction, you will arrive at the original partial fraction, not partial fraction, sorry, but rational function. And that's it.